Okay, as you can see, we're back now with Canucks head coach Travis Green. Travis, thanks for your time today. We'll take our first question here from Jay Janauer. Travis, good afternoon. Um, good I noticed you ended today's practice by telling the guys that you, you liked the way that the game was trending. I think the one thing we've seen with this homestand, with, with, you, with you guys being able to practice more, Travis, is, is we've seen more structure in your team's game. How is it balancing the structure that you want them to play with, all, with, all, with also letting your guys be creative? Because you've got a lot of creative guys on that top line. Uh, by no means would it uh, deny any creative hockey in our in our team. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe that's a misconception when people say that uh, structured hockey is eliminating skilled hockey. We still want our skilled players to to play with skill. We want them to make plays, um, and that that isn't being eliminated from our game. I think that. The second game against Calgary, we had, uh, I want to say, 20, 19 scoring chances, and that's 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 a high number. How much uh, how much do you look at this month of February, Travis, and thinking, you know what, if, if, if we can really go on a winning streak, we can really change our fate and change the way that the structure looks in the standings? Well, I think it's important that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves and just look at a bunch of games down the road. Um, you know, I, I truly believe that and no matter where you're at in the season, you, you can't look too far ahead for us. It's just getting ready to play the next game, um, making sure that our, our game is solid, uh, you know, and just repeating the process over and over. And, and, and hopefully at the end of the month, we've made up some ground. I think you run into problems if you start um, looking too far ahead too early in the year. Thank you, sir. Yep. Next up is Ben Kuzma. <laughs> Hey, Travis. Who's? Um, in practice today, you were running an offensive zone face-off drill uh, where your instruction was for the inside guy to take a direct route <laughs> to the net. Now, for uh, a neophyte like myself, uh, that would have an, a, an advantage if you won the face-off, obviously, Travis, to get to get a guy there. And if you lost the face-off, then there's some puck pursuit. Uh, what, what's, what was the intent of that drill? Is that something that is missing or something that just needs reinforcing with the inside man on Ozone face off. I got to start whispering out in practice so you, <laughs> you guys don't hear me. But uh, yeah, we were working on a couple different things in that drill. Uh, you obviously heard the one point. We we're also working on uh, the defensive side of it when you lose a draw. Uh, those are things, little details in our game that we try to work on and touch on uh, every day, really, a part of a face off drill if, we're, if we do it that day. So uh, yeah, without getting into too much detail that's what we were working on you talked at length about the value of practice time travis and it's not just for your young players or, or your newcomers i would imagine it's just a reinforcement tool i mean it, this compacted season whether you've been in the league for one year or 10 years uh practice can be super valuable i mean uh, again how important was today it, it's it's another rare day to actually work on things yeah it's not just today i think you know we had a stretch there really from game one to game 14, 15, 16, where we, I think we had three practices. Yeah. Um, I think we've had four in the last eight to 10 days, it feels like. Uh, and we've got to take a look at certain parts of our game that we really felt needed improvement, that we tried improving on with video. And, and you know, sometimes that's easier said than done. We had to actually go out and get hands on and, and do some drills that help different parts of our game and give our guys credit. Uh, they worked hard in these practices. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I think they're seeing their game uh, come around in the last four games. We haven't necessarily won the, you know, we haven't won the, um, as many games as we've liked in this last little stretch. But, uh, you know, a lot, there's going to be times where you're playing good teams every night and, and uh, you know, Calgary's got to say in how, what you do as well. We we played a pretty solid game last night. Uh, I thought they played a better game than they did the game before. Uh, the chances, uh, they had a few more chances than us, but it was relatively low both ways. And we probably had a couple plays that uh, ultimately we'd probably like back. 
Thanks, Travis. Yep. We'll go now to Ian McIntyre. Hey, Travis, I heard everything you said to every player. We're just going to run the transcript tomorrow. <laughs> All right. But I am, I do have a question about a couple of individuals that are not really game related, but, you know, Thatcher today, he seemed, you know, I, kind of hard on himself, like his, his body language. I know a couple of veterans at times went over and, and talked to him. Is he a guy who in particular wears losses hard or is especially hard on himself? Uh, nothing more than any other player I've seen or any other goalie. Uh, I, I, I honest, I personally didn't see Thatcher in that manner today in practice. I think if you watched him after a win, he'd probably be ultra competitive as well. Uh, that's the way goalies are. Good goalies in the league are competitive and, um, he's no different, but, uh, I think he's in a pretty good pretty good place okay my other uh question is about nils and i was thinking to last year you know when quinn hughes was over uh at the same age as nils in fact i think he was a year older sorry nils is a year younger now than hughes was but mm -hmm. hughes you know he had he had veteran guys looking after him chris Tanev took him under his wing he was going to guys houses for dinner he had the young guys as kind of a peer group to hang out with mm -hmm. i imagine things are very different with the pandemic and as a as a coach does it does it make it harder to make guys feel you know at home and part of a group when there's so little that you can do socially to help uh yeah i think you worry about a little a little more um with what's going on in in our game and the society and uh how we're having to conduct ourselves but, uh, you know, we do check in with him regularly. Um, man, he just seems to have a smile on his face every day he comes to the rink. And uh, he seems to be in pretty good spirits so far. His play would indicate that he's having fun. Uh, you know, he just, just, he's just a hockey player that loves coming to the rink and playing. Uh, he's got a lot of qualities that we talk about uh, that we look for in a Canuck. And, um, you know, he's an exciting young player. Thank you. We'll go now to Farhan Lalji. Travis, I want to ask you a little bit about Petey, uh, who's got 11 points in his last 11 games. But more importantly, it, it just seems from watching him that he's been a lot more aggressive of late. He talked about how he was moving his feet more and skating better. Uh, what are you seeing in his game the last few weeks? I think I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, you know, any, any top player in the league is you notice them skating. You notice them, like you said, moving their feet, wanting the puck, uh, commanding the puck. Uh, I don't think he had his legs under him to start the season. Uh, I think he'd probably admit that, that he wasn't on top of his game. And um, But he, he, he does seem to be uh, getting to the level where, where he played at before. And, uh, but again, he, this is a young player that's played a couple of years in the league. Uh, we're having different times. It's not the same. And, and that might seem like nothing to the outside world, but there are different circumstances that affect all players. And I think much like Ian asked about, uh, Niels, uh, it's no different with these other young players as well. It, they're all affected in different ways. And, uh, but it's good to see that, like he said, he's feeling better. He's skating more. He's getting more puck touches. And, and uh, you know, again, he's, he's young still, and he's still progressing. Also want to ask about uh, Jace and Travis Hamannick. Uh, will they travel with you guys, and uh, is there a chance they could play soon? Uh, Jace, is, he's cleared to play already. Yeah. Um, Hammer's still not. I'm not sure if he's I, – I believe he's traveling with us. Thank you. All right, we have time for one more here. We'll go to Rob Williams. Hi, Travis. Um, you're playing hey, JT Miller on the on the penalty kill now. Um, what have you What have you liked or disliked, or what have you seen from him there? And he his minutes creeped up almost to 25 minutes. 
uh, last game with all the special teams. Um, are you comfortable with him playing that much or do you have to look to get him more rest at five on five? Well, it's a good question. I, I did call Millsy in today and talked about his minutes, but I, I don't like them creeping up that much. And, uh, you know, it's funny, guys are competitive. They want to play as many minutes as they can. And, and on the other hand, I, I did tell him that I like his penalty killing. So I think when you have skilled players and hard players, uh, th there's a combination, you know, with your penalty killers. You're lucky if you can find a guy that's very skilled and can kill penalties and uh, is hard enough to do it and brave enough. And uh, he has those qualities. I think he's a good penalty killer, and he's done a good job since we've added him. There was a lot of talk at the beginning of the year of our penalty killing not doing very well, and they've kind of clawed their way back into having doing a pretty good job now. So uh, I'll probably keep him on the penalty kill, and it might I might have to cut his ice uh, in other places once in a while. Uh, last night his minutes got a little bit high because of the – the amount of power plays that we had at the beginning of the game and and then we were chasing the game at the at at the end of the game and almost went down to pretty well two two lines the last five minutes and sometimes you do that as a coach and you have visions of playing a guy 20 minutes and you end up playing him a lot more uh but he was also a big part of the tying goal uh standing and being brave at the net front and facing a shot so uh but to answer your question again i, I have liked his penalty kill I believe his minutes, you know, I don't like to see his minutes that high and uh, probably try not to get them that high. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Travis, for your time. Okay.